Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about text types. First, let's open Notepad. Okay. First, we need to type the base code that is obviously required. HTML slash HTML. And then head slash head. Inside the head tags, you can put whatever you want. So title. And inside the title tags, I'll put this. Next, the body tags, body slash body. Now let's save the file. Note that you have to save the file as an HTML file. Okay, this is the base code. Now, in HTML, you have several kinds of tags, that is, inside the caret symbols, which can format specific kinds of words. For example, in the previous video, you have seen the title tags called H1. Those ones are meant for, like, a really big title. So, inside, I'll type h1. Now let's see this output. In the previous video I showed you how to open the file by double clicking it in the file explorer. You can also do this. Opening your browser, you either use open, file open, or you can just use Control O, which is the case for most browsers. Next, you just find the document to open. See that? The first thing I've entered here was H1, inside the H1 tags. So it returned that. Next, let's try H2. There are actually six kinds of levels you can have, H1, H2, H3, and so on up until H6. So H2 would look like this. It's same like H1, but it's a little smaller. Next, H3. You see that? H3 is even smaller than H2. Next up is H4. That's even smaller. Next, H5. That's even smaller. And the final one is H6. And that is really small. I better zoom in. Okay. So I just zoomed in so that now you can see. So H1 is the highest, like the largest title size you can have. And A6 is the smallest title size you can have. Mm, too small. Okay. What's next? Well, next is the paragraph element, which is just a P. So a paragraph element shows text in the form of a paragraph. 
So you write the paragraph tags like this. The opening caret sign, P, and then the closing caret sign. Say for the closing bracket, except you put a slash before the P. This is the normal structure for tags. Any tag will have two sets, one which doesn't have a slash and another which has the slash. Other than that, the tags are virtually the same. Now inside I'll just type paragraph, the word. Let's refresh it. See that? Pa the paragraph element is around the same size as a H4 element, except that the H4 element is bold and the paragraph element is not. Next, we have the I element or italic. This you need to use inside a text element. So I'll just first go ahead and make one using the paragraph. Okay. So now this word italic is currently a regular word. But if I put the I tags just between that word, just like the P, the word makes it look italic. See that? It's italic. I better zoom in a little. Next is the bold tags. This too, I need some text. So bold. Now, just like I tags, the bold tags uses B. So I just put the slash B here and the B here. Note that you know, we use the tags like these so that if you want any text that shouldn't be highlighted or that is B italic or bold and have some text in between to be italic or bold, we can do it by just putting it between, I mean, before or after those tags. See that? The word bold is, well, bold. Notice that the title tags are also bold. This is by default. You can always change this using CSS, which we'll learn later. Well, what's next? Well, there are several other styles you can use, but it's generally recommended to use CSS for those. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. But before CSS emerged, HTML had its own tag options, like a little bit of code to do that. Okay, so this is all the text, but what if we want something more? What if you want an image? Well, to put an image, you need to use the, well, I'm sure you guessed, IMG tags. Now, in this case, we have a little bit different. Because the image tag doesn't need any text, it just needs a file location, you, can, you have two options. Either to use the tags like this, like you normally do with text, or use this fancy fancy format. This tells that you can use whatever's inside the tag, but then not require an external ending tag. But we had to use here for the text tags only because we had text between them. What's next? Well, once that once you got your image tag. You have to start with the keyword source, which is called SRC. What is source SRC? Well, this will be the file location. Oh, and note one thing. If the file is in the same location as your HTML file, then all you need to do is put the file name followed by the extension that is .jpg, .png or something. But if the file is not in the same location, then you'll have to, well, in Windows at least, start by specifying the drive name, followed by the folders, and then the file name. It will any of them work if you have the file 
in the same location. But if not, then you have to use the longer format. It's better to use absolute formats because then you don't have to worry about the um, HTML file being moved around. So let's get an image file. Hmm, what should I keep? Uh, how about I keep this one? Now to get the path of a file, we'll have to right click on the file and select properties. And then take the location, the folder path. Now I can just copy it. Of course, this won't include the name of the file. So just be careful. Saw that? The image which I got here came in my web page. But doesn't this image look too big? Well, the image tag has special attributes to change the size. However, these attributes don't take in mind of the original dimension, so be careful when using those. So you have two tags for this purpose, width and height. So the width and height take in account of pixels. So let's say if I wanted width, width to be 100 as well as height, I can just set width equal to 100 and height equal to 100. Note that there's no need of a um, comma to separate the items, only that you need a space to make sure that HTML understands what you mean. You saw that? I set the width and height to 100, which made the file smaller. If you look at the original file, you'd see that the width is 536, but the height is 504, which means they're not the same. That means if we zoom in, now, it's not visible, but the image would actually be stretched because the height got more compressed compared to the width. This is not visible with this image because this is an almost square. But with images that are like a rectangle, it would be visible. Like, for example, if I put this image... Now, this image was a rectangle. If you look in the properties, if you look in the properties here, you see that this is a definite rectangle. But here, because I set it the width and height to equal the same thing, 100, it made it into a square. So HTML doesn't take into account whether the image is supposed to be vertical or horizontal. It doesn't take into account of the shape. It just sets it to the dimensions you have given. So please be careful with this. But if you're not sure, you can just, once you get the dimensions of the image, you can just do a little bit of division and figure out what dimensions would be good. For example, if I had an image of 100 by 200, if I want to reduce the size down by 50%, well, for this image, it will be clear, but I'm just saying. What you can do is, because 50% is half, you can just divide both numbers by 2. Then, using those numbers, you can set it as the width and height. That way, you'll get the exact proportions. Being smaller, but still look the same, only that it's just smaller. 
And the same applies for video. For video, it's the same thing, like the image. Oops. Except that it can have the capacity to play video. So now I need a video. Hmm. How about this one? So the part for this file would be this. Oh, and one more thing about file parts. In Linux, if you were using a Linux system, when you copy the file part, you'll see that it will give the file part along with the name. But in Windows, as far as I can see, it doesn't do that. So let's enter the file name. There. Now if you refresh it, yikes, that's a big file. Oops, just refresh it. That's really big. So just like the image, we'll also have the width and height tags for the video so I better reduce the size so the width 200 and the height also 200 now unlike images if the video size is not correct what it will do is actually add those black borders you may be familiar with those but when I click on the uh, video you'd expect it to play it doesn't play so you have to right click, show controls, and then you can click on it for it to play. So how do we fix this? Well, one thing you can do is put controls at here. And like that, by default, it will come. So this word, controls, is not a special attribute, but more like a setting you can put for the video, which doesn't have any of its own properties. You can say that you can have the control there or not be there, but you can't say you want a big control or small control. Well, in the case for a video, it doesn't make sense. And also, oops. And also, you can also have autoplay feature. It's that annoying feature that you get on some websites that automatically plays once the website fully loads. I added that tag. Now let's see if it works. But please note that sometimes it doesn't. As you just saw, it didn't work. But you can automatically fix that by right-clicking on the video and setting loop. That way you just need to start the video once and let it continue its course. Okay, I want to stop. So that, those are the basics on putting formatting on text and including images and videos. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.